Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to ERAV TV. As tonight, we are bringing you guys some Heroes of New Earth action. If you're not familiar with me, I am Pat the Twiz Harrison. Casting alongside of me tonight, who's also going to give you a quick roster rundown here, is going to be none other than Wet the System. Hey guys, I'm excited to be here. I'm ready to see some hero kills. Alright, so uh, on the Legion side, we have Inferno Cry. Uh, blue is No Hope. Then we have Dirty Mobs, Wicked Sick. We have The Ringer, Present Rape, and Trickster. On the right side, we have uh, Sex Kittens uh, with Meow, 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 Frozen, Inquisitor V, Cerno, and Kawhi Neko. Nice, nice. I'm definitely like loving the Sex Kittens name. Uh, it's like Rockstar all over again. So, a little bit of the bands right now. Right now, uh, we do have Pebbles, uh, Bombardier, Bubbles, and Thunder. Thunderbringer is the bands, and of course you guys know why they're all banned. Uh, obviously Bubbles being a, a pretty uh, tough champ in the game, but uh, I haven't seen the Zeus ban in a while. Can you kind of, or sorry, Thunderbringer ban in a while. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, it seems like uh, every, they're banning a lot of the stronger middle heroes. Thunderbringer, he wrecks tri-lanes. He's just annoying to play against. Okay. Definitely uh, some good insight there, as we're now seeing the Madman and uh, Hammerstorm band as well. So definitely this is like my most boring part of casting Han, is the picks and bans. There's a lot of thought, uh, kind of goes into this picking and banning phase, and uh, usually not a lot to talk about. So that's why you guys are going to hear Wet doing a lot of the talking here, as he's, he's giving us some insight uh, to maybe the team comp going on and why these picks and bans are being chosen. Yeah, sometimes to get insight and in why people ban, you gotta know the teams a little better. I know that uh, Inferno Cry has been picking Hammerstorm and doing really well with him lately. And Hammerstorm's getting very popular in the competitive scene, so maybe uh, Pink banned Hammerstorm as a to purposely keep it out of Inferno Cry's hands. All right, and uh, looks like the final two bans being uh, Witch Slayer and a Doctor Repulsor. So now we move on to the picking phase. So I know you're pretty familiar with the uh, Infernal Cry team here. What picks would you expect to see out of them right now? They usually go for uh, a double stun tri lane, so I expect to see that. Even though we are missing two of their uh, preferred heroes, Witch Slayer and Hammerstorm, but uh, I usually expect them to go the the usual. Actually, that's a little bit unusual that they're going Sand Wraith. They usually, I think, they like a stronger tri lane than Sand Wraith can offer. All right, and uh, how familiar are you with uh, the Sex Kittens as, as a team? Have you have you seen these guys play before, or is this something that you're pretty new with? They're new to me. I'm I'm excited to see them play. I gotta be really careful not to call them by their tag. Oh yeah, they're definitely being uh, dirty, dirty, dirty girls. Um, it looks like they're kind of uh, figuring out which picks they want. I do see Pharaoh up there as well as uh, the Chipper. Uh, and Polywog Priest. Uh, so definitely some good uh, CC that they're looking at picking already. Yeah, um, and since they have the advantage of getting the second pick, sometimes you can. that's when you want to pick up some of your better support heroes, because you can get two of them at once. And yeah, they were able to pick up two pretty strong ones there, Hellbringer with that massive AoE stun, uh, and then Voodoo Jester along with that. Uh, so with these two picks right now, what are we going to look for for laning right now if, uh, if we're seeing these guys uh, as their intro picks? Well, uh, Hellbringer and Voodoo Jester are some of the best tri-laners in the game. Usually Hellbringer ends up also being a good soloer depending on the picks. So um, I'd expect them maybe to pick up their tri-lane hero next and maybe one more backup tri-laner or a very good solo. All right, so we do have, um, right now, for the Legion, they picked up uh, Myrmidon and Pharaoh. So two, uh, again, very strong champions there. Uh, as we see the first pick, again, on the Hellborn side, as they're uh, snagging the Chipper, which we did suggest, or we did uh, suspect him to grab. And possibly uh, the Great Behemoth. Maybe not. So um, I guess I'm still interested to see what the 
Legion team ends up with. They picked up Pharaoh. That was a good pick. I think they got it before the Hellborn team was going to pick it up. I think they really wanted Pharaoh. Um, and it seems like for the fourth pick, Dark Green picks up Plague Rider. We don't see Plague Rider very often, but he is an excellent hero, an excellent babysitter. He can even solo lane. Definitely, and thank you for correcting me there. Yes, in this game, it is Heroes, because it would be Heroes of New Earth, not uh, Champions of New Earth. Too many games going on at once. You're lucky that I'm not calling them, like, Zombies or uh, the Hunter or the Boomer, since the rest of my time I spend casting uh, Left for Dead. So I guess we're kind of lucky that I didn't completely miss there. I guess if Balfagor was on their team, you can call him a Boomer. Yes, if they had Balfagor, I could definitely reference that to... Uh, to the boomer, uh, but uh, looks like we did see Sex Kittens uh, with the Plague Rider pick, uh, which again, uh, a lot of uh, intelligence going on over here. It's going to be nice to see exactly what kind of counter picking goes on uh, from Infernal Cry. Uh, as Big Max points out in chat, yeah, I, I could definitely see a Vindicator pick. He's a good counter to uh, intelligence heroes. But we'll see. Vindicator is also really easy to gank, and there are some superb gankers on the Hellborn team. Alright, so uh, there we did. We did see that Vindicator, Vindicator and Polywog Priest. So they're going to kind of go for the counter there on these guys. I'm interested to see what Sex Kittens finishes off with. They've kind of got they've got a, a weird team. I have no idea what what they're going to want to try to carry with. Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting here to see uh, uh, who they're going to choose for their carry. They, with all the uh, Ents champion or heroes, let me see if I can get these right here. With all the Ents heroes, they're definitely going to be pretty strong in the early to mid game. So I wouldn't, I don't know, I guess you'd see probably Kronos, yep. Uh, that is a very, very good hero to complement all of the AoE that these guys bring to the table, wouldn't you agree? I'm actually really surprised and kind of excited to see Kronos. It's been a while since he's seen, he's seen competitive play. He's been nerfed into the ground, buffed and nerfed again, buffed and nerfed again. So I'm excited to actually see, see him in the game again. Well, then I'm glad you were excited. I'm only excited because the sex kittens are here. I mean, the moment that you guys said sex kittens were playing, I was like, you know what? This is my cast because I am excited and I will not spend the entire game talking about Defiler's boobs like I normally do. Because she's not in it, we which is kind of disappointing. We could talk about Empath's boobs. They're like a whole cup size larger. Oh my gooses. So tell me what we're going to see for lanes here. Just, just tell me what we're going to see. That's all. I, that's all I care about right now. All right. Um, Polywog needs to solo. He needs his levels. And it's the same with Pharaoh. Pharaoh can, you know, he can manage without his levels, but he needs the farm. So we'll probably see him solo too. Um, we're going to see Mirmanon and Vindicator supporting Sandwraith in the tri lane, which kind of worries me. Vindicator is not. He's he. The only way he could support is by suppressing the other team. He's an offensive support. So we'll see how that goes out. Um, Kronos is definitely going to be tri-laned. Kronos can fit into a 2-2-1, two, uh, two, two, but I, I really doubt it. You, you're going to answer a tri-lane with your own tri-lane, usually. We'll see Chipper and Hellbringer solo. Alright. Very, very, very nice uh, point out there. So you're really surprised about this Kronos, uh, and obviously I haven't been here for the nerfs and the buffs and the nerfs and the buffs, but I mean, to me, with, with what we're seeing from the Hellborn team, I mean, that seems like, a, with his ultimate, that's going to be a pretty devastating, uh, pretty devastating mid-game that they're going to bring. Oh yeah, uh, Kronos, Kronos' ultimate is going to complement all four of their heroes perfectly. You've got Chipper, Hellbringer, Plague Rider, and Voodoo Jester all, all get complemented by heroes being grouped up and just stacks of Kronos' ultimate. It's too bad, it's not the old Kronos' ultimate where it reduced everyone's movement speed by 90% instead, you know, because that wasn't, that wasn't even fair. But, uh, Kronos, 
just for his ultimate, seems like a solid pick. Alright, so uh, Chipper grabbing the rune there from the bottom lane. So uh, what I'm seeing is with these tri-lanes, there's just a lot of action. That's sort of the majority of the focus is. Uh, but the one thing that we have to definitely pay attention to is going to be the creep count uh, throughout this game here and who's winning the other the other side lanes as well. So what tri-lane right now do you feel like, uh, as far as hero-wise, is going to be the stronger one at this point? Um, I, I'm, I have a hard time being sure because Vindicator is going to really hurt that Kronos if he can get some good Sage's lore blasts off him. But, and then the, the bottom tri-lane... It's going to mainly be passive simply because Vindicator doesn't have a stun and Sandwraith isn't a very active trialing hero. Okay. Two definitely good points here. As we're seeing here uh, at the tri lane, Kronos trying to get in here for these last hits. Uh, Vindicator quite often doing the, the harass here, forcing these guys back. Uh, but Plague Rider uh, does a really good job as answering back with the harasses. But as you were saying, uh, Sage's Lore is definitely going to be the key to this lane, to its, either its success or its failure. Uh, basically making sure that he can land it on at least two or three of these uh, heroes here. I would say it, it'd even be better to land it on only one hero, as long as that hero is Kronos. Voodoo Jester has cheap spells you can throw out. Plague Rider has nearly infinite mana. So it's going to be really important to get Sage's Lore on that Kronos. Uh, interesting anecdote I'd like to point out about top lane is um, I criticized last game with Inferno Cry uh, versus, I can't remember the team's name right now, the Cool Kids. That's right. Uh, the Cool Kids laned a Pharaoh against the Hellbringer, and I criticized the Cool Kids for it, and now Inferno Cry is going the very next game we cast on them, putting Pharaoh up against the Hellbringer. So I'd like to see how it comes out with, with uh, on a different side. You're pretty excited about a lot of things in this game, what? Uh, like, Inferno Cry is such an interesting team to watch. I think they're up and coming. If they keep practicing, I think I think they could get into some, uh, some of the higher professional games and give people a run for their money. Well, I just don't think I'm a typical gamer, because I definitely am really enjoying the sex games, and I don't know if that's normal. We see some action on the Sand Race down on bottom lane. He's getting very, very low. The Taunt Out is on him from Kronos. Kronos does get the kill, but he loses uh, the Bloodlust. Yeah, and there we see him uh, trying to escape from this so he can go back and heal up. But yeah, he does, uh, he does get the kill there. So it puts these guys 1-1. One, one. Uh, we're just a few minutes into the game, so if you're just hopping in to join us, uh, you're not missing much yet. Other than that, uh, this is uh, kind of boring right now. It looks like Hellbringer doing a good job keeping Pharaoh pretty low at the top lane. And I see Chipper in with a lot of harass here in the middle lane as well. Yeah, the lanes up top are fairly even at the moment. Um, Chipper is definitely winning the mid lane. He's got, he's already got nine denies on uh, that Polywog Priest. As far as the tri lane, the tri lane looks fairly even at the moment. Um, I, yeah, you know, a, a couple more denies on the Legion side, a couple more hero kill, uh, creep kills on the Hellborn side. Oh, and we do see, uh, yeah, Pharaoh going down to the Hellbringer up there. So, like I said, that Hellbringer is just so hard to fight against when playing a Pharaoh. So I think that the main the main aspect of the outcome of this game, um, once we get uh, start to get beyond the laning phase here, as most of the lanes are even, is going to be exactly what happens during these team fights. Uh, it's going to be really tough to, to figure out what's going to go on. And so uh, Kronos's ult is definitely going to be the key to whether they can win a win a team fight or not uh, early to mid game here. Yeah, I I, I totally agree. Uh, a lot of times when doing the tri lane, 
Uh, especially if the tri lane ends up being a close competition where there's no clear winner, the mid game becomes the most important part of the game. Uh, like, especially with the Hellborn team, they need to have that very successful mid game to keep Sand Wraith from farming. Yeah, and uh, Hellbringer up top, he's just gonna pick up all of the uh, all of the creep kills there. Uh, now leading the pack pretty much 25 creep kills, 26 creep kills, 10 denies. Uh, but I should say Kronos is doing quite a good job far coming down at the tri lane, doing a little bit better than what the sand rate is doing actually. As we do I have see a lot a of action going out on Myrmidon. Yeah, Myrmidon barely escaping with uh, with very little health there. Kronos now going to be paired up against Vindicators. Vindicators trying to pound away all of that health. Sandwraith coming in on the Kronos here. Kronos nearly dead with Sage's Lore on him. Barely able to escape. Will he survive? No, he is now being denied by his teammate Plague Rider as he was not going to make that. And now we see Myrmidon diving in after Plague Rider and Plague Rider is down. He is just whooped. Uh, these guys able to pick that up, and Voodoo Jester are going to be chasing him down into the woods, but he's going to get away from that. Oh, that was an amazing chipper rocket barrage there. Remember not to even see it coming. Oh my god, I didn't see it coming, and I've been paying attention to the sex kittens the entire game. This chipper's on the ball with rockets so far. He's gotten several good snipes. He even took Polywog out in mid one. So, top again, both of these guys, very, very low. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that Pharaoh's giant booger of doom on cooldown as he's going after it. Uh, alt in there onto Hellbringer, and he is going to be pounding Hellbringer into the dirt at the top lane, which is pretty good as he, uh, he needed that to come back here. He had lost the last fight against Hellbringer, and it definitely put him back a little bit there as far as uh, creep score. Yeah, well played by Pharaoh. It, it, it was a good choice. You know, the, the nuke just didn't kill him. Go ahead and throw your ultimate out there. It's short cooldown. You know, it's worth it. Yeah, whatever. Just die. That's all I say when this game. In the middle lane, we see Chipper taking out uh, Polywog yet again. This Chipper is dominating the middle lane. Uh, not only has he just been dominating the lane itself, he's also had very strong rune control uh, throughout the most of this game. I think he's picked up nearly every rune so far. Yeah, definitely. And uh, this is a really close game so far because of the way the lanes are trading. You've got top lane very close, bottom lane very close, middle lane a little bit on the on the Hellborn side, and that's where I, I bet you see a lot of the experience and gold difference coming from. Yep, yep, definitely there. And I believe that my Han has just crashed, so we're gonna have to bring in Big Max in here to do uh, some more of this commentary. Alright, so Chipper as pets. taking out, uh, taking out Vindicator in the woods. Sorry about that, Big Max. Hey, yeah, no we problem, see no Chipper problem. taking out Vindicator in the woods. And we're gonna see Hellbringer come around the trees here, looking to get this gank here on Myrmidon. We're gonna see a port in there by Kronos. Here goes Malphys down, Roots being tossed out by this Myrmidon. Myrmidon gonna get away, no one's going down just yet. Malphys running around, a fire breath going on on that Pharaoh. And we are gonna see Sandwraith be taken down in the woods by that Hellbringer Death Boil. They're not done yet though, they're chasing. Myrmidon's gonna go down, Chipper getting quite low, Tower pounding on that Hellbringer. Hellbringer looks like he won't go down though. Uh, Kronos is going to chase Pharaoh. Pharaoh looks like he's going to mummy's get away. Not before Death Boy gets tossed out. And I think Hellbringer's just going to escape. Barely, though. Here goes the bolt. Ooh, no hit on Hellbringer, though. Hellbringer is going to escape. Uh, and no Vindy ult there either, as he is not level 6. Vindy level 3, very under leveled wet. Yeah, Vin Vindicator can have a really tough time getting any levels or farm. He he's a tough hero to play. He's one of the most challenging. But man, that team fight, back and forth, back and forth, and so many Hellborn heroes got very low without them getting the kills. Yeah, they backed him into that corner below the tower, and the tower could only hit one hero at a time, and that, I think, was the Hellborn team's uh, biggest advan advantage right there in winning that team fight against the Legion team. And I am back. Man, it sounds like I missed a ton of action, and... Uh... Especially when it comes to two words, action and sex kittens, I am all for it. 
and a little bit of stuff going on at the bottom tri lane here as we do see Chipper dropping his alt down, going after Vindicator, and these guys are now forced to run as they were the challengers and now getting taken down there by Sandray. And that just turned that into was... a terrible, terrible predicament for them, Wet. I mean, they go in chasing these guys like, woohoo, woohoo, we're gonna get a kill, we're gonna get a kill to, oh my god, we're dead. And that's what Feral will do. His his ultimate plus his mummy wall can just completely turn fights around. Oh, and there we go again. Seeing that death boil from Hellbringer making Myrmidon another one of his victims here. Uh, right now we've got Feral going in and uh, thought he was doing pretty solid there. Now he's put into a bad position. Polywog uh, Priest coming in and picking that up. His ultimate going down. Maybe gonna be able to yes he's snagging voodoo just there picking up the double tap 11 minutes in 20 hero kills this is a very, very intense game you see why i was excited now twist i i i still don't see why you're excited because the kills don't matter they are sex kittens that are playing right now that is important man you just don't get it wet So, well, I, I guess you're rooting for them because they're sex kittens. It's kind of shallow there. Well, you know, they, they always say you can't judge a book by their cover, but if you read a book called Sex Kittens and you don't enjoy it, there's got to be something wrong. So I'm going to use that same concept here in this game. Fair enough. As we see, uh, Myrmidon open up on Kronos in mid, and Hellbringer coming in to help. Myrmidon's going to get away very, very safely with that waveform. It's always good to pick that skill up early. It's a really good initiator, uh, it reduces magic armor, and you know it gets you out of those really sticky situations. And, and you know what? Where this game is right now, what is exactly where I want to see it. I mean, we're like completely even right now as we're uh, the the laning phase is is about to end here soon, and we're going to see a lot more team fights coming up, and then it's going to be all down to skill. So it's going to be who uses what when, and a lot of this emphasis, again, is going to be made on that Kronos alt. Right, it's going to be Kronos and Hellbringer controlling these team fights, and it's going to be the follow-up of the Chipper ultimate, the Voodoo Jester ultimate, and the Plague Rider ultimate to finish them off. So back to a little bit about what the creep score is at right now. Um, looks like... Polywog Priest, 40 and 4 with the highest creep count. But more importantly, let's focus on the carries. It's the difference between where the carries are at. Uh, Sandwraith is 20 and 5, while we're looking at Kronos at 38 and 16. So obviously the carry taking the majority of the farm here is going to be Kronos. Um, sorry, I'm missing that right there as Polywog was able to kill uh, Hellbringer up at the top lane. Hellbringer chasing him around with Malthus. Uh, Polywog going back in, but he probably shouldn't be as he is almost dead. Uh, Malthus using the Fire Breath onto Polywog. Polywog at very, very low health right now, trying to run away. Uh, 102 health, barely escaping there. I, I have no idea how Hellbringer turned that around, considering that it was actually Pharaoh was up there too. Um, Hellbringer finished off Pharaoh before he died to Polywog's ultimate. So you were talking about carries, yeah. We have uh, we have Sandwraith sitting at about 192 gold per minute, and Chronos sitting at 228 gold per minute. So Chronos has the, the slight gold per minute advantage. As far as items go, it's still early in the game. Um, we see Chronos has picked up his life tube, probably going for the rune dax, and maybe the same with Sandwraith, or he could be going uh, for the typical tanky build. But all this action down here at the bottom tri lane. As we do see Plague Riders, he was taken out there. Immediately, Pharaoh in with his ult, going after Hellbringer, and he's going down! Polywog Priest along with Sandwraith trying to finish up here onto Voodoo Jester, and yes, he will go down as well. Chipper coming in, getting uh, Sage's lore on by Vindicator, uh, but he's backing out of this fight. Ultimate Rocket, a little bit of auto attack, and down goes Polywog Priest. And we find ourselves, finally, 15 to 14, uh, the Legion barely ahead here. Oh yeah, it's still a very, very close game. Uh, the, the Legion has started to take uh, a little bit of lead in experience and uh, gold. I guess they're they're getting the advantage usually out of these team fights.
Yeah, definitely there, man. As we're seeing Chipper trying to chase down the Sand Wraith at the bottom lane. Uh, not necessarily going in to really do a lot of damage, but just letting Sand Wraith know that he is there, and he's not going to sit here and let him free farm, uh, which is not what you want to happen. We do see a 15-minute uh, Helm of the Black Legion on Sand Wraith. Uh, he already has boots also. Not not a bad farm, not the best. I've seen I've seen him pick him up pick him up as early as nine minutes before with a really strong lane. But like I said, you ha they had that Vindicator lane. They were trying to suppress that Chronos, and I guess Sand Wraith does have the farm advantage at the moment, as far as items are looking. Oh uh, yeah, now we're. Uh up to the, well, I guess uh, we did have a teleport up to the top right now. Uh, Polywog Priest not knowing what's in store as we do have the uh, stun out from Voodoo Jester. And he is just getting hell pounded out of him as he dies there to that game. And Pharaoh able to come in there and go for the pickup with that. Sand Wraith ultimate off as well. And all the action happening at top, we do have Malthus out as well. And all yeah, Pharaoh's mummy wall. Over. Pharaoh's Mummy Wall served as the double-edged sword that uh, that encounter. He, he ultimated in, he picked up the, the kill, and then he Mummy Walled to try to get Hellbringer in. But Hellbringer ulted him, and then the Chipper ultimate just destroyed Pharaoh while he was standing his own mummies. Yep, and I mean, that brings the game a lot closer than what it is. About 1,200 gold difference, uh, give or take, between these guys right now. And, uh... Right around a K experience, so that definitely brought these guys back into the game. So, what are your thoughts at this point, Wet? Who do you think, if you had to put money on one team right now, would you put money on iCry or would you put money on the Sex Kittens? It, it looks like it's going to be a very close game, but as always, in the close games that end up going into the 40 minute mark, the 45 minute mark, Sanray always comes out on top. He is a very dominating late game hero. Well, I want to know an answer from you, Wet, because this isn't going to be one of those games where, like, we get to the end of it and you're like, well, yeah, I thought they were going to win the whole time when you didn't call it out, dude. I'm going for the Sex Kittens all the way right now, and I need to know what team you're committed to. Well, I, I think I'm going to commit to Inferno Cry because uh, Sand Wraith is getting a decent farm, and he's such a much more powerful carry than Kronos. Kronos is kind of that one-trick pony. He has his ultimate, and... And then he has to get out because no matter what, he's still squishy without his ultimate. Okay, so you, the viewers, now get an option to see what happens. Are we going to base the winner of this game off of true stats and analytical uh, decisions here? Or are we going to do the smart thing like most of us do and just base it off of a really cool exotic name? Uh, you guys be the judge of that at this point and guess who you think is going to be, uh, be victorious. And if you guys are smart, you're probably going to go with the Sex Kittens. I'd say that's the hot answer at the moment, if you catch my drift. Yep, this is like my team right now. We see some pings on the on the middle lane. Whether they're looking for a gank on Chipper, who's backing away, or they're just getting ready to push. Uh, yeah, so as far as towers go, Hellborn's middle tower, gone. Hellborn's top tower, well, that's gone too. And uh, in return, all we have is the top tower uh, for the Legion, which is destroyed. So towers right now, uh, looks like your team's ahead in that, as well as being ahead in gold and experience. But you know what? Sex Kittens will be the underdog, and that's still who I'm going with. I won't change my answer yet. As far as towers go, um, I have to give that advantage to the Legion simply because they have Polywog Priest. He's so good at pushing towers. He can usually solo a tower once he gets to uh, level 11, picks up his level 2 ultimate. And we do have see some initiation on to Voodoo Jester. Yeah, big gathering up at the top lane. I cried doing a great job coming in for the separation here. Kronos with the ultimate off as he's now uh, being caught in the wall of mummies by Pharaoh, forced to blink out of there. And that fight definitely going to I Cry. And there we see it again. Uh, the ultimate from Polywog Priest. And this is going to be another tower uh, going down at the hands of those Voodoo Wards. Yeah, and that team fight, I have to say, the problem was 
Kronos had to use his ultimate defensively. He didn't get to use it in, in concert with his team. We do see Hellbringer going down to the Polywog tongue tie, and he just gets destroyed. Oh uh, yeah, I don't even think that we got to see um, Plague Rider's ultimate off there. She was forced out of that fight so early, just taking a ton of bursts. Uh, the same with there. Voodoo Jester, and I, I see that a lot. Voodoo Jester is usually enemy number one. His Curse Ground, his ultimate, deals so much damage, and then that cocktail can just... If there are no creeps around, it completely changes the team fight, because it can just stun the entire team. Yeah, that along with uh, the ultimate from Plague Rider could have made a difference there. Uh, if that could have just been positioned a little differently and they would have caught that as they were still inside the woods before it was pushed through the lanes, uh, that team fight would have easily, I think, uh, went to uh, the Sex Kittens. I have to say that the, the full 5-on-5, five five, if all five teams, if all five of each team both meet, then... Uh, Sex Kittens will win. We do see another initiation from Pharaoh. And the Sex Kittens again, uh, not doing very well there as we do see an ultimate by Hellbringer now, and they're going after it. Uh, Chipper positioning himself on the other side of that ledge, using some rockets to try to get a little bit of damage. But again, look at this, 22 to 16 now being the score in favor of the Legion, uh, which is Icry, as they have now pulled themselves ahead by nearly 9,000 gold as well as 8,000 experience. And it looks like a Polywog Priest kind of took the hit for Myrmidon just there, blocking the rockets from killing Myrmidon. Chipper's on the ball with some of these rockets. He's, a, he's an excellent sniper. Yeah, I agree, but you know what? That sniping may not be enough. Uh, for my little sex kittens to win this game. I may have picked the wrong team here, but you know what? I am for the sex kittens, and I will stand by until this game is over. I may not choose them next time, but this time, I'm all for them still. A man of conviction. Well, you know what? The moment that I go to work tomorrow... And I talk to my friend who's like a huge Dota fan, and I tell him that I did not go for a team named Sex Kittens as the day that they start making fun of me all day at work. And I don't want them to think I'm a nerd. I mean, I work at Best Buy. There's no such thing as a nerd at Best Buy. You are indeed a nerd. I was about to ask your place of employment where um, someone who played Dota would make fun of you. So there we're seeing a little bit of a different impact here in the middle as we did see Plague Rider able to get that ult off and Pharaoh went down. Uh, Kronos ultimate there onto the Polywog Priest. Polywog Priest uh, should not be a problem for him to finish that up as he was able to and that kind of changes a little bit of an aspect of this game as they are now only down by four kills uh, earning a little bit of that gold back and definitely winning that fight. Yeah, they came out on top with um, two hero kills, I believe two ultimates used. A lot more coordination that time on the Hellborn team. And as Big Max notes, we do see a Sword of the High on Sandwraith, so he's going for that Mock of Brilliance. The huge amounts of AoE damage to these team fights. Yep, and I am just having a terrible trouble with Han tonight, as my game is just spazzed out on me one more time again. So you know what? I'm going to step away from this cast, you guys. It was great to be here. Uh, Big Max, why don't you just go ahead and take it away here and finish up for us? Will do, will do. Thank you very much, Twiz. As we're going to see action going on here, we're going to see a Myrmidon Roots real fast, and Myrmidon's going to take it down with the help of the... Uh Feral uh, mummies right there. We're going to see a lot of retreating going on here by the Hellborn team, but the Legion team's not going to give up. Magic Carp going out on that Voodoo. Voodoo's going to go down. Here comes a port in by Polywog. A great morph. There goes Tongue Tie, and down goes Kronos. So we should see a tower push here on this middle lane to, uh, wet. And uh, this has just been a back and forth game, don't you think? Very back and forth game, but it seems like it's slowly going in, in favor of the Legion team. Polywog's ultimate is up in four seconds. I wouldn't be surprised with uh, the heroes down and their ultimates down. But they they might try to push the next tower. I'd hope they take advantage of it. I mean, uh, it's Plague, it's Hellbringer. You know, why not go for it? See if you can get that Rex. It, it'll give a good position to win the game for the Legion team. They don't look like they're going to go for it, though. Maybe going to go up and take the, uh, the top tower, uh, as we do see... Um, some pings to defend that top tower. 
so the Hellborn thinking that they might do that though. Legion team not looking like they're going to do it. And we do see Yamaka Brilliance finally on Sandwraith Wet. That's what we've all been waiting for. And uh, just an overall great game. Yeah, and Sandwraith's taking full advantage of it by destroying uh, the Hellborn's triple stacked creeps. Uh, we Also on Kronos we see his uh, Blessed Orb. So it seems like he, he realizes that he's going to be that team fight initiator, not the rice farmer Kronos that you're, everyone's used to seeing. And I guess he is uh, going to go for, um, what's the item? I forget the name. Null stone, that's it. He's going to go for yeah. a null stone and try to increase the survivability. Yeah, it does look like it's slowly turning in favor of the Legion team. I really wasn't a big fan of the Kronos pick at the start of the game. Uh, that kind of threw me for a loop there. Always fun to see him in there, but I think there could have been many, many better carry choices for the um, the Hellborn team. As I knew Myrmidon was going to be getting picked up over here by the Legion team. Myrmidon, always a huge factor, just like Bubbles, with that double stun lockdown. Yeah, he's a very powerful hero. He takes a little bit of skill. You don't want to cast Magikarp on someone who can just stop. You don't want to cast Weeds in a way where someone can just step out. Um, and so he's a, he's just a very powerful hero. S2 totally made him to be this strong, like, in cemetery ganker. And he's just turned out to be one of the best support heroes that we see in competitive Han at the moment. Yeah, I still do give the MVP, though, to Bubbles. Uh, I think Bubbles, although, doesn't have that lockdown. Uh, his disable and his alt has a, a more major, I guess, um, support than Myrmidon. Myrmidon locking down, I mean, at least one or two at this kelp field and one with the magic cart. But Bubbles usually makes a, a really huge difference. But both very well, um, you know, towards that type of, of ganking. So I still think Bubbles has the one up, though, on that Myrmidon. We are going to see a lot of them in the woods right now at top lane. Probably going to look for this, uh, this gank right up here in a team fight couple of illusions of Pharaoh gonna beat on this Hellbringer right now and uh, Hellbringer looks like the only one on that uh, team for the supports that has any items yeah the Hellbringer is doing very well the supports are doing much better on the Legion team we see that uh, Polywog has a portal key uh, Myrmidon has a shaman's headdress and I think he's going to turn that into a barrier item Vindicator is the ward bitch, but still somehow happens to have a beast heart, trying to up his survivability. Yeah, Vindicator really hasn't made that much of, a, of an impact, as we are going to see Sandwraith go down by a chipper ultimate, getting a little too uh, antsy there to get a kill, it looks like. But Vindicator making a major impact either way with that ultimate, as I figured out with four ints, you know, when you saw four ints on the team picks, what were you thinking? Wayne? I was a little confused. It, it, it is confusing, even though all four of them are excellent heroes. They have very, very high damage output. But sometimes it just makes it a little bit too easy to counter. You know, they're squishy. Vindicator is obviously a good counter to intellect heroes. Yeah, they got that big old ult and all that Sage's lore and stuff like that. But it's just more along the lines as uh, Pharaoh and uh, and Polly and all them. They can dish out dish out just as much damage. But Polly and all them, they're they're more tanky. So it gives them the the plus one on that late game. And Kronos not being the superb carry that he needs to be in this game. I just don't see how they can outlast that Sandwraith getting stacked. Oh, and Sandwraith has already almost finished his frost. Frost Sword, so it's just going to get worse. Once Sandwraith finishes his, fro his Frost Sword, you're not even going to be able to get away from it. And that's what they're looking to get. We do have quite a bit of downtime here, as there was a new video release for Empath Tom Irwet. So, what are we looking at with her? Uh, a really exciting, possibly overpowered support hero. She's got some original abilities. Her ultimate actually allows you to, like, infest one of your allies to boost his attack speed and um, damage so it's a it's a one-of-a-kind ability hasn't been implemented in Han yet and I'm excited to see it yeah it's kind of a uh, for all you Dota fans out there a, a semi replica of Nakes's uh, old alt where he used to infest a creep and regen his HP you know so something along the lines of that didn't give a buff to the creep or anything but he could do that to get away from any damage that uh, was put on her or on him so as well as that uh, mini bubbles alt too with the whole little drain the HP move far away get snared I think that's gonna have a lot of versatile uh, versatility in the game 
You know, that's how I thought about it, too. It looked like a Bubbles Ultimate for one person. But the advantage... You, you've got several advantages. Um, like, for one for uh, one example, when watching the video with Swiftblade, Swiftblade was doing his Swift Slashes and accidentally moved out of range during his ultimate and it immediately stunned the hero. It was pretty cool to watch. It's going to be a fun ability. The character seems to have uh, a lot of multi-useful skills. They may not all kind of sync together very well, but it's going to be a lot of fun watching her play in games. That wall looks... That wall could possibly be her, like, game-breaking skill. It, it, uh, a skilled player can use that just completely destroy team fights. Yeah, as the uh, video calls it, it's the better version of the Behemoth Fissure without the whole damage, but uh, it only blocks enemy heroes. Always a big plus. It's not as far of a um, of a stretch as the Behemoth uh, Fissure, but it's still there. It's still good. He, she's got a passive regen buff that uh, also scales as the game continues, so always uh, a big plus right there to keep your team healed up during those downtimes in between the team fights and stuff like that to be able to push again. So I'm glad that they made that scale, you know? Uh, yeah, I kind of imagine that uh, a team with maybe both Glacius and Empath is going to be a, a laning, an early game laning force to be reckoned with. They'll have so much early game regen. Yeah, that mana regen and the, uh, the HP regen is going to be really good. Early game and late game just keeps you being able to cast those spells and keep in the team fights and stuff like that. Especially now that Blood Chalice doesn't give the HP regen anymore. So for those who do pick it up, can still get HP regen from that Empath. Um, also, a quick thing. Do you think that if Empath channels her life drain when she's close to you, then port keys in front of you. Will it stop and snare and she'll stun you but be on the opposite side of you? Sorry, I missed that. I was kind of participating in the, the interesting uh, the conversation about Cronus' items. I'm talking about Empath's uh, stun where she gets too far from you? Yeah, so say if she's right next to you, you know, uh, you're, you're smacking her with melee attack. So she puts the drain on you, and she port keys in front. So she port keys to behind where the hero is, but in front of where he would run back to retreat, and just puts a wall up so her team can come up and, and defend her. Will it still snap and break, or will it be like when Bubbles alt hits a wretched hag and they blink away, nothing happens? It's just kind of just too far. I don't know. Um, you know, this, Only the preview video has been re released. I don't think the actual script, I don't think Element User has posted any of the script for her abilities. But I, I imagine it's not like Bubbles. Uh, uh, if it is like Bubbles, it'll only be from the other hero's end. Like, so if you put the link on a, a wretched hag, she can, maybe can blink away from it. But if Empath puts it on someone else and she blinks away, I think it'll still stun. Yeah, that could be a, a cool combo right there. As well as I called it with her uh, her ultimate. I knew it wasn't going to give a shrunken head. That would defeat the whole purpose of the item. But a damage boost and an attack speed boost for any carry is always a big, big plus. I'd like to see the actual numbers on her ultimate. And it looks like she has... I'm not sure if it's a timer. Maybe it's kind of like, like Marax's ultimate. Where it has its own little health bar. I'm not sure. It... it, it it was kind of weird. You, you you see her hovering above the hero, and you see the hero gets a new bar also. Yeah, that could be kind of like Marax's ult. The, the thing that kind of like gets me really excited and, and ready to go to play her is she can cast everything even while she's in her ult. So she's just this invulnerable aura throwing out, wall putting up, life draining machine. And if she life drains while she's infesting an ally, it heals them too. I mean, that's just, all that stuff is all good for any character. Yeah, uh, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to those pub games where she gets a codex and just rides around on someone's back codexing people. That's going to be fantastic. I might do it myself and get the icon for codex level 5. And we do see the pause finally ending. Uh, everyone's ready to go. Uh, hopefully the stream is still good. Yeah, hopefully everything's going good on the the stream's end. Um, no Congor yet, and uh, Hellborn seems to be lacking in the golden experience department, as uh, we see. And uh, while we do have this excessive downtime, Paley, why don't we go to War Rooms real fast, as we do have them for uh, Infernal Cry.
We go front top. Uh, maybe we lost yeah. Pele for the moment. Yeah. Um, Alright, so we are back here from the war room, so just a little war room right there. We are going to see some ults begin in here by Sanray. Sanray is going to pour it in after that. Voodoo Jester is going to go down. Melf is going down, though. Kronos ult going down. And even though Kronos ult did go down, it didn't hit many people. Kronos trying to blink away there. Uh, Hellborn getting devastated in this team fight. Play getting away. Kronos not so lucky, though. And Chipper running around. I don't know exactly what he's thinking. He's going to get picked off, it looks like, by that Myrmidon. Here comes the Kelp Field. Misses with the Kelp Field, though, but there's Sage's lore. And uh, he's going to toss out a rocket. Chipper is still getting away. Uh, nope, here comes the port in, but he's going to rocket. There comes Tar Pit. And after all of that, Chipper goes down, but not without putting up a fight. I got to say, that was an excellent run by Chipper. It was entertaining to watch. It looked like he might even somehow turn it around on that polywog for a second. But, you know, you, you can't fight five heroes by yourself. Yeah, uh, so, I mean, Chipper definitely gave his, his all effort, and uh, we are going to be seeing, hopefully, a tower push here, as they still do have heroes down. Not for very long, but uh, a good bit of time there on one of the heroes. So, doesn't look like they're going to take advantage, though. They're going to go back. Uh, and uh, after that uh, crazy team fight, why don't we go to War Rooms there for the Hellborn team, which is Sex Kittens, and see what they're uh, they're talking about after that. No, I really need to finish this. Like, so in the downtime, we can go ahead and start talking about some items on each side of the team. Yeah, let's go ahead and bring it back here for more rooms, as uh, they're probably still talking about how they want to get back from that from that loss there. Not a bad, not a bad loss, but uh, they're still down 20,000 gold, almost 20,000 experience, and uh, about those items, what? Yeah, we see Sanwraith sitting on 1,500 gold, whether he's saving up for a Blessed Orb for his Frostful Skull or not, or maybe he might go for the Frost Burn as yet to see. We do see Myrmidon finish his Barrier Idol to help against this, against this Int-heavy team. Uh, Polywalk has finished his Staff of the Master to help push, while Chipper has yet, ch while Chipper has yet to finish his Staff of the Master. We also um, have Voodoo Jester just being the ward bitch. Kronos, we did see, finishes Nullstone. And uh, Hellbringer has a Astrolabe. I think he's had that for quite a while, so no new items on him. Uh, we see, we did see a lot of gold on Pharaoh, but it looks like he spent it. He has Blade Mail now. Uh, and a Glowstone. Yeah, Hellbringer, though, did pick up the uh, the Shaman's Headdress, so maybe he's going to go for a Bear Idol for his team as well, as it does look like, because he is picking up the Refreshing Ornament. Um, so, as we go to Myrmidon's items, he did pick up the, or, uh, sorry, Feral's item. He did pick up the Barbed Armor, so maybe going to get himself a little bit more tanky and going for a Staff, possibly, what? Yeah, uh, the Blessed Orb, that's the only thing I can really think of as a staff. You don't see staff on Pharaoh very often, even though it is extremely useful. It does make us... Oh, we do see an initiation of Myrmidon on the Voodoo Jester, a Miss Weed Field. Go ahead and take it away. Yeah, we are going to see that Miss Weed Field, though, but they're still going to get him either way. Death Wheel being tossed out. Here comes... Uh, <laughs> Here comes some more stuns, sorry. And a Barrier Idol being tossed out by Myrmidon. And it doesn't look like Hellbringer's going to get away. There's a quad kill being picked up by that Sandwraith. All by that Sandwraith to that fact. And he's going to get some massive gold on that. A great, here comes a good tire push. GG is being tossed out though. And, and uh, we are going to see a concede. So a really weird game. Just from the start in general, Wet, with that 4 int pick, I knew this wasn't going to be a, uh, a straight game. There was going to be some twists and turns. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, when you pick such a heavy team, it's it's going to rely a lot on skill and teamwork. And uh, even though a lot of the teamwork was there, they just didn't stop the Legion team from farming up the items to counter them, such as that that amazing fairy idol. You saw the Legion team almost took no damage in that last team fight. It also has to do with that insane level difference, even from the supports to the carry on both teams, uh, that massive goal difference, and just getting out carried once again. A lot of the teams we've been seeing, it usually comes down to getting out picked, and most of the time, the pick that usually is the one that gets out picked happens to be the carry. And we've seen a lot of Sanrise play here, Wet, and it mostly, most of the time, minus one a game, I think, or maybe two, the Sanrise usually comes out on top. Uh, it only takes, I, I won't say playing Santa Ray takes a lot of skill, because, uh, you know, if you if you just use the illusions every team fight and pick up some uh, assist gold, you're, you're going to do pretty well. But it takes a lot of skill to work as a team with the Santa Ray, and once you get that, that team working together and you make it to like the 30 minute mark and Santa Ray has the mock of brilliance, it's... It's awfully going to look in Sanrae's favor. Sanrae's such, such a powerful hero. He hits those illusions and Mach just hits everything. As we're seeing the creeps get their glorified moment for the game. This game is going to take its uh, end right here. And uh, as I do thank Twiz for coming in to cast this as I was observing a master at his craft. And uh, we are going to leave it here. Uh, so what the system, any final words? Uh, sorry Twiz, your sex kittens didn't win. <laughs> and his sex kittens did not win, but a great game, none the least. So here from Erev TV, Big Max and Wet the System signing off.